Welcome back to Maniacal Music Musings once again. I'm your host, Jeremy, and I'm here with the children of the grave. Don't worry. Though it is hip to be squared, I will say. Scared. Fucking autocraft. No one stands against us musers as we're eating jambalaya on the bayou, of course. Later on, we'll be setting the woods on fire with that muser anti-venom gas. It comes in handy, I'll tell you. My co-host, ladies and gentlemen, has long gone lonesome blues he sings about as he sits in the forest telling the children his ghostly confessions. He tells them all to say farewell to your flesh and get your funeral derangements in order because this will be the worst vacation of your life. Welcome to Harwood, he says, as he's not like you, and he'll tell you I'm so lonesome I could cry. Chancy motherfucking grief, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. See, she was laughing before you did that, because she knows my humor. But And that's right, folks. We have a guest that you will all recognize this week. What up, Lonnie? Glad to see you watching, buddy. But our guest this week, well, based on that name you might know, is my co-host from the Asylum with Harley and Joker, Miss Harley or Quinn herself. Hello, my dear. What's up, everybody? Hello, Amanda. And, and who the hell let you out of your pad cell? That's my question. God damn it. Got to get a new fucking security guard. Did Batman beat him up again? Jesus Christ. But we are here, as always, folks, to talk music, not the asylum craziness tonight. Well, I mean, there's always a little bit of that, but uh, not fully that tonight like normally when you see the two of us together. Oh, man, to bribe the guard. That explains shit. shit well, she's got boobs, so she don't have I'll to just say, I'll just say I've seen her. I don't, she, doesn't have to, she doesn't have to bribe shit. So, But we are here to talk about three albums as always and some different albums tonight folks so let's get this motherfucking party started already because it's gonna be a fun one harley what album did you bring and why do you want to bring it oh my so i am a huge oh my ice nine kills fan oh my god blank brain tonight and so I brought Welcome to Horrorwood because that is my favorite album. Hmm. Oh. I will say, I will say, I've heard of Ice, I've heard of Ice Nine Kills. I've seen them on con enough concert posters over the years to fucking know who they are, but I never actually gave them a shot. I just put them in that miscellaneous metal band folder and never touched them. So, I have to fucking say, I was kind of pleasantly surprised that they were actually decent. I didn't expect them to be, honestly, because it's newer metal, and newer metal is eh. But, they were actually good. They were actually good. I mean, they remind me of a combination of, like, three other bands that I can't fucking think of. But they remind me, they, they're trying to be too many different people. That's the only complaint I have about them. They're trying to, they're trying, they're trying to pretty much bring Manson and Slipknot into one along with like two other bands. And I just can't, no, no, it's like an abomination of metal almost in a way. But one that's somewhat acceptable. I did have, a, I definitely got a top five and a few honorable mentions. So I enjoyed it. And definitely some elements of some, some songs that I fucking loved. But, Overall, just I felt like they they're like we know how to do music good, but we can't put it in we can't put it in an order that flows well. We just have lack of organizational skills. See, their concert presence is. Me and Amanda went and saw them in concert, and they put on a really, really, really good show. And his wife is the murder victim of every one of his shows every one of them and well spencer that's the lead singer and she's hot as hell anyways so but she's a murder victim how's she at every show 
because they kind of breaks like in every song you, you'd have to watch the videos to understand every song someone dies and it's her who dies in every one of the songs uh, okay uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it i'll take your word for it i mean it ain't no concept album i'll give you that fucking shit it ain't no concept album but unfortunately but uh Chante, what did you think of the Ice Nine Kills? Um, so I thought that there was some pretty cool like vocals to it. I I I liked some of the gutturals; those were pretty cool. Um, I don't know. For me, it, it kind of felt. Kind of like uh, something that, you know, like scene girls and or the simps that are trying to get what the scene girls would kind of listen to. I just I, I just couldn't get into it. it. It's definitely better than Jeremy's album, which is also saying something. But like. I, no I offense, Jeremy, I couldn't really get into your album either. Yeah, yeah, I. uh when I realized that it was something I wasn't actually going to be able to get into, I was just kind of looking at it from a more technical <laughs> angle. Like, oh, hey, I like this. I like this. Um, when I drop my top five, I'll give my biggest critique as far as the one thing I didn't like. I specifically put it on my top five so I could talk about it. But, like, I mean, it's better than Jeremy's album. <laughs> it's not gonna be the end of this episode, Chance. Do I have time to say it? It's not gonna be the end of the episode. It's for the God. Uh, and even Amanda agrees they're not for everyone. But yeah, and that's cool. You know, I mean, I've got a few bands like that as well. A few, yeah, a few. Yeah, a few. But, several, several, but. Harley, what were your top five off of uh, Harwood? Okay, so my number five is the funer funeral derangements. Number four is ex mortis. Number nice. three is hip to be scared. Number okay. two is welcome to Horrorwood. And my 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 number one is the shower scene. And like I have honorable mention mentions it's worst vacation and fly but my See, because I, the shower scene is based off the of psycho right and that I, is my I, favorite I, one like in the concert they actually have the shower curtain and he goes behind the shower curtain and murders her and there's like blood splatter going everywhere because so, I like the shower scene more than hip to be scared. It's uh, <laughs> well, shit, Amanda. Be prepared to be surprised. Um, because I mean, I had four honorable mentions for the CD. I did get into it somewhat, but just couldn't get into the whole thing as a concept. Just couldn't. But. The, the individual songs, once I took them individually and didn't try to put them in together, like I expected this band to kind of, based on what I read, I thought it was going to be like a concept album, but I apparently was mistaken. But first I'm going to mention was Welcome to Harwood, because it was a pretty good intro track, and it was pretty pretty solid. And I like bands that do the intros like that. So number eight was Funeral Derangements, just because it was all right. It was all right. Number seven was Take Your Pick, because that was actually not bad. That The guitar in that was fucking incredible. Number six was Farewell to Flesh, because that's right up my alley. That's right up the songs all my arse will do. So, Number five was Worst Vacation, because it almost was like, what if Weird Al went emo? So, I, that's kind of why I went with that. But <laughs> Number four was uh, Assault and Batteries, because I love... My wife and I, my, okay, my wife is now watching the Chucky TV series. I started watching it, but then podcast editing got in the way, so I kind of lost it. But in the beginning, the, Andy, time to play, motherfucker. I love that shit. That, that made me laugh my ass off. So, 
Number three is Ex Mortis, because that song's incredible. Number two is Fly, because that song's incredible. But the number one, and Amanda, you're right, number one is 100% hip to be scared. Because one, Jacoby Shaddix is fucking amazing. So anything he's in, I will fucking love. And two, the little sample in the middle of it from uh, Hip to be Square, I fucking love that sample on that that's per that i wasn't expecting it it fucking blew me away like <laughs> i love that fucking songs i love that original fucking song so the fact that, they, that it, the fact they paid homage to it is pretty fucking uh funny so i enjoyed that immensely <laughs> and i'm guessing i either just hit on what chance he was going to critique Critique, and I said I love ways of critique. I'm assuming. I said but, I, I I would recommend that whoever this Amanda person is, that they probably have themselves to sit down, and they better hang on to something because they're not to they're about to not enjoy the day. <laughs> My number five was actually hip to be scared because of the fact that I found this to be a literal audio holocaust. Like we're talking a motherfucking war crime. It's like every fucking problem that I have with this song was checked off like the Geneva checklist. Fucking. The fact that they made a song about American Psycho means that they did not understand anything about American Psycho. It's like, oh, I'm so cool and I'm a killer guy, but it's all about the 80s and how awful. It's like literally the Patrick Bateman's a fucking representation of the 80s in the 80s doing 80s shit i.e cocaine and stripper bitches it's it's it's, it's 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 satire at its best but my number four was ex mortis which i thought was pretty cool i de i definitely liked um my four through one specifically uh number three is farewell to flesh uh, number two is Funeral Derangements. And uh, number one was Take Your Pick. And I definitely dug I definitely dug the guitar part in that. That was pretty fucking awesome. But yeah, fucking hip to be scared. I just, I, I heard that shit and I was like, come on, man. <laughs> Especially with Jacoby. Yeah, I mean, it's such I mean, a chance. Yeah, I mean, not everyone can be right. So, you know, there's there's that. It's it's really it, it takes up so much of my day. I honestly don't know how to time manage the the amount of times that I'm right. It's really tough. I should really get an assistant, you know. <laughs> is, is, isn't that why? Isn't that why you have Casey? No, nah, she's not. She's not an assistant. Well, I mean, a a, a, a technical assistant anyway. <laughs> uh. So, yeah, I mean, for a band that wants to be Marilyn Manson, Corn and Slipknot all thrown into one, it's, they're not bad. And I think they even want to be Papa Roach, too. I think that's why really they brought Jacoby on. But, because one of those songs, I, I forget which one, but one of those songs 100% sound like a Papa Roach song. I can't remember off the top of my head which one it was, because I listened to the CD first yesterday. But, you know, it just... <sighs> I don't know. I just, they're not horrible. I mean, I was, I was looking at the rest of their album covers and I'm like, all right, you know what? Their album covers fucking look amazing. But I've been fooled before by album covers. I've been fooled before. So I, I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm going to wait and see if anybody else brings them on at some point. I'm sure somebody will. Somebody always does. What if we had two U2 albums now for fuck's sake? So. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> God help us all. And I think there's a U2 song on the next Rolling Stone bracket. Actually, I know there is, so yeah. Uh, it's actually one of the good ones, though. But we'll see when that comes. So I guess at this barren time, it is my pleasure to bring forth the album I decided to bring tonight. Because, you know, as my co-host, I know Harley. And she told me once that she likes dark rap. So... I was like, okay, this is the album I can't just bring with a guest that doesn't know me already because it's just not going to go over well. And we've I've already tried that kind of thing and I had a guest just randomly complain about it and not stop responding. So I don't know 
<laughs> well, uh, I basically was like, all right, at least with Harley, I know I could bring this and she's not going to crucify me for it. Crucify me for it. Yeah, I shared it. this I, album with Amanda. I may have been wrong about her cru not crucifying me for this, but um, whatever. You know, you do shit, you do shit. But uh, I decided to bring one of my favorite albums from about a decade ago. Team Death's Not Like You. And Team Death is Satanic and Razakel, which both of those artists have been on this show before. And they actually both got pretty high reviews solo, but... Uh, <laughs> They did. they did. They did. No, they did get. They did get high reviews solo, but I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know what happened here. This is like, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Do your thing, Jeremy. Uh, explain yourself. Oh, well, I mean, I basically explained it already. Harley, Harley said she likes dark rap. And all right, all right, Harley. Let's see. Let's hear what you think oh, about this oh, monstrosity. Uh, because I mean, we were talking about we were talking about ICP one time, and she was like, "That's okay, I like dark rap." This isn't ICP. And no, I mean, no, they're inspired by ICP, like every hardcore artist is today. But uh, no, Satanic and Resicale are definitely darker. You don't be a part of a record label called Serial Killing Records without being a little dark. And since they ran the label, they're the kind of darkest <laughs> people on the label by far. And I mean, Satanic is very high on the... Eh, I mean, they, they talk about some controversial topics, but as I, get, as I get to my top five, some of these discussions need to be had. So, but Harley, uh, I am ready. I have girded my loins. What is your uh, review of Team Death? I mean, I, I didn't really get into it, but to each their own and... I mean, I do like ICP, but this was a whole different, yeah. See, I thought you would get into it because this is a CD for the outsiders of society. This is a CD for the wolves, not for the sheep. Really? Nothing? All right. Well, Chance the Rapper, what did you think of this Brave Undertaking? Well, you know, since Harley came in and played Good Cop, I'm just going to be real with you, dude. It was fucking awful. Dude, check this out, okay? I don't know if you can see this or not. It was so fucking bad. It made my fucking <laughs> pen. It made my pen vomit. It made my fucking pen vomit. All right? It was Ugh. so fucking bad, dude. It it literally reminded me of something that sounded like they had to hurry up and get it done before mom came home so they didn't get in trouble. It's so bad. Like, literally, you could just about use a metronome and not change one thing about any of the beats in any order of, the, of any order of these tracks. It was all the same drivel. And honestly, like, out of the whole thing, I, I mean, I got I got three songs that I liked and fucking four just horrific monstrosities that just wanted to talk about bad shit and be bad because they want to talk bad, be bad. Like, I don't... I Does not compute. Fucking tilt. See <laughs> fucking attendant about quarter. I don't know what to tell you, dude. This shit is bad. Like I almost wanted to, I almost caught myself saying, you know, I could use some Cottonmouth Kings right now, but then I realized that was how far down we have gone. Oh God, sir! Mm. Uh, I I I I knew bringing in this album that Chancey was going to have either an amazingly positive review or just tear it apart. I knew it was going to go one way. It wasn't going to be in the middle. It was going to go one I'm, way or the other. And that's what bothers me is because like they on their own, the albums you brought were good, but like you put them together and it's just like, well, like you could I mean, literally just hear it all dropping down into the realm of nothingness. I mean, is Cher better without Sonny or is Cher better with Sonny? I mean, that's the way I look at it. 
I don't, I don't understand the, I like literally, okay. So this makes sense. This makes sense. I now understand why you like it because that made no sense either. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at the time when team death was a thing, the two of them were running the record label and they were full on dating at the same for years at the same time. So that makes sense. So, I mean, and then he pulled that shit that we, he, he pulled that shit that we talked about when Casket was on about right. how, about how he faked the car accident to get mm-hmm. money from his fans. And that kind of is when they split apart in one separate directions in every aspect. So, I mean, Team Death was like their project of love. They did three, they did a Christmas, they did two albums and a Christmas album. But, and I mean, you think this album was dark. The first one I didn't bring was a lot darker. Literally talking about aborting the baby Jesus in that album, but... No, dude, it, this one was worse because they talked about doing worse things. Uh, it depends on... No, there's no, there's no, no, there are, there is no depends. There's no depends to it. None. And I will be more than happy to explain when it comes time for it, because I can't, I can't, no, you can't say that, that aborting something would be much better than that fucking, which I'm about to describe once it's time to do go down the fucking top fucking lists of what's, what's worst to least worst. We already talked about worstification, but um, so my first my first honorable mention was "Put It Down" because I mean it's a good like underground rap rap song, but that's basically all it is. I was hoping somebody would put me down after listening to this fucking thing. <laughs> Things can be arranged, Kathy. Things can be arranged. Don't but, fucking do me no favors. But number seven was so full of hatred. Cause, I really was not even like you're really listing my fuck. It's like it's like the symptoms of you know grief. Because uh, I, I mean I I can relate. To, I when this album came out, I was a different person. I could very much relate to that to that song. But number six was Anti Venom, just because it's a decent song. Because they, they offered more it, I declined. I'd rather die. <laughs> You are a motherfucker, sir. You are a motherfucker. But uh, <laughs> number five was not like you, the fucking title track, because that fucking album was that, that that song was actually fucking pretty damn really amazing. Like I could relate to that freaking song so fucking much back in this time period. And sure, back in some, back in some other time period. Uh, this album came out in 2011, so I was listening to it probably 2012 to like. 2015 hard and then no i'm saying i'm saying like you could still probably resonate with it because not completely (laughs) not not completely not anymore (laughs) it it, it doesn't have the same effects it used to Uh, but number four was a track i don't even remember being on the cd i had but apparently it got added but ghostly confessions which i never and I, i never even heard that track and that track's amazing so but and I like the the artist who guessed it on it. I forget his fucking name, and I don't think he's anybody big or that's even known. But dude, if I would have right featured, so. if I would have featured on this album, I would have demanded that they put me under redacted for my own fucking safety. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, my number three, of course, I had to put it number three because there's a couple better songs in it, but it touches on a dark subject and my number three was playing Columbine because it touches on this that started to be a big topic when this album came out and they wanted to speak on it they said in interviews because a lot of their a lot of their fans were the type of people who would be instantly accused of doing things like of possibly doing things like this because of the way they dress because of the way they act their anti-social nature so, they put out this song as kind of like a, and I, I mean, I guess it's kind of a way to almost deter them in a way. I mean, by overplaying it, by just overshadowing like what it really does. And they also spoke out about like how they hated that Manson was blamed for Columbine and the speech Manson gave for Columbine was brilliant. 
I actually read that speech out loud in uh, my speech class in college. That was my uh, celebrity speech I did. So, and I actually got rave reviews from people in the, in the class. So, and I got to curse. So, fuck yeah. But, uh, number two was, my number two was Stands Against Us. Because I think that's actually like a good wedding song almost. Like, that's a, that's a song about love. Like, that song's fucking amazing. And my number one song is, there's a music video for this song even too that's fucking incredible. I love this song. It's a song that got me into Team Death. My number one song is Children of the Grave. Because it has my, one of my favorite fucking rap groups ever, Dark Half, on it. And fucking just that, that song is incredible. That's kind of the Team Death stuff I like the most is when they do this type of shit. <laughs> fucking great flow, great beats, and just they bring on amazing guest stars from other labels like LSP. So RIP to one half of Dark Half. But yeah. Yeah, we miss you, buddy. We miss that voice. What the fuck? Uh, I can't think of his fucking name in this second, but it'll come to me, I'm sure. But, Harley, what were your top five for Team Death? Um, My number five was Put It Down. Uh, Number four was So Full of Hatred. Number three was Not Like You. Number two was Ghostly Confessions. And then my number one was Stands Against Us. And then I have some honorable mentions, Children of the Grave and Horns Up. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Horns Up. I'm just not a good intro track in my mind for them. They've done better. Chansey, unleash the Kraken. So my two honorable mentions are actually two songs that I enjoyed. Um. I thought they were cool because of the kind of a more EDM style track that they had to it. And that was Femicide. And I'm just going to call it RR. Fucking, they can look up the track list if they want to look at it. Um, so number five for me was playing Columbine. And I, I took the opposite take from it, from like them trying to do this as an over, like an overplay it just seemed, honestly, it seemed like something that was like, you know, if they are like, I was one of those kids that actually kind of got that stigma when it happened. Cause I was in like middle school when that shit happened. And a lot of times, you know, if you got caught up because of something you listened to, and then somebody heard you fucking listening to that, that's 90 day. That's a 90 day mandatory right there because you just got caught up listening to some shit. That's literally just fucking, hey, I'm saying, sh- and I understand that there's more to the message than that, but I mean, literally, when you're hearing it, it's just like, I'm saying this shit just to say this shit because it's fucking twisted and it's going to sell. Uh, number four for me was So Full of Hatred. Uh, it was, like, I, I, it just, it, it was, it was all right. It, it wasn't bad as far as the worst of the worst go. Uh, number three was Children of the Grave, but I really should put Children of the Grave, Children of the Grave, in number two <laughs> because fucking point nine eight is so fucked up, like so fucked up, and that's why I said when you were talking about how it, the other song is talking about aborting Jesus. They're literally talking about ped- pedo and Jesus, dude. That's fucked up. That's so fucked up. That's why, nah, dude. Death would be better. That's fucked up. And then for me, you know, Ghostly Confessions was pretty good too. So I put that on the list at the t- at number one. But fucking this one, this one fucking fell to earth, and the shoot did not open. Dude, just fucking. It there were hard. no. Surf- it was really hard to listen to this album all the way through. <laughs> there were no survivors. Like I'm sitting there at work trying to listen to this, and I'm like, "Fuck, what the fuck?" I, I was listening to it. We're fucking editing and doing it. Like, but I work with old people, so. 
I, I used to work with old people. And I used to blast this in my car on lunchtime. Fucking blast and playing Columbine get you some looks, but but I could have brought the other album where uh, Razakel raps about uh, pagan satanic. I mean, at least that would be something else. I mean, I mean it, 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 all the songs kind of sounded the same. They all agreed. Like, it, it didn't really have much to it, but they were all like the same sounding song. It just kind of bled together. The, the beats are same different sound. every fucking song. The beats are different same, every fucking song. Uh, but the but the flow is the same. You could you could pretty much set a metronome to it. It just uh, eh. I don't know. I I like I like their flow. I always have. That's why I got into them. But yeah, but. Ah, that guess I bring us that brings us down to <laughs> what I may call the strangest, what I would call the strangest fucking CD on this uh, on this episode for damn sure, and that would be Sir Chance a lot's random ass album. Uh, Chancey, what random ass album did you decide to bring? Dude, I brought the first rock star. I brought the first rock star. That is Hank Williams. Your cheating heart. Fucking, it's Hank Williams, dude, for real. Like, I'm surprised I hadn't brought it any sooner. And I was like, you know what? Fucking, boop. You know how I do it. Pull up my YouTube music. Shafel. All right. Well, it'll do. Fucking one of the first members of the 27 Club. I mean, it, it just, it is, you know, he, he's a fucking legend. Love him or hate him. <laughs> Did it? Well, I'll wait to my turn for this, but Harley, what did you think of uh, Mr. Williams? I honestly have nothing negative to say about this because I grew up in Oklahoma and Hank Williams was my grandfather's favorite singer, so nothing negative. Uh, I mean... I, I'll say there's not much negative I can say about Hank Williams. I mean, his voice is kind of annoying as shit, but uh, that's the only thing that annoys the fuck out of me is his voice. Like, but I mean, it's wasn't horrible. It wasn't horrible. And, I mean, there one of the fucking title track I think of this uh, album is on our next Rolling Stone bracket part. And I know there's another. I actually just saw the other day. There's another song from this album that's on another part coming up. So, I mean, he definitely, he, everybody knows who Hank Williams is. He's definitely got popularity in the world and he's definitely a fucking legend, a legend in the music industry. But I just, some of the, I, I learned some new songs. I knew a lot of these songs already, but it's just not something I ever would go listen to on my own, really. But just, no, I mean, country went, God, old old ass country, like older than Johnny Cash and Elvis country shit, like old country. So, but that's yeah. when country was good, though. Was the old uh, country? Uh, I don't. I don't it reminds me too much of a fucking Sunhouse type shit sometimes. But <sighs> yeah, you fucker. But um, Jancy, what were your top? What were your top five for Hank? Number five for me was Love Sick Blues. I love that uh, in Shawshank, you know, because he finally talks him into getting all that shit and they give him a mm -hmm. record collection and that guy's just sitting there finally getting to listen to Hank Williams. And then uh, number four is Jambalaya. Jambalaya. Fucking love <laughs> that shit, dude. Uh, number three for me was I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry because I uh, I mean it's a good song on its own but I also like Volbeat's cover of it. it they did a very good job with it as well if you haven't heard it I would highly recommend checking it out uh, number two is just you know it's it's iconic it's hey good looking uh, that's funny what it's a great song and oh, number one funny. Number one is fucking your cheating heart, dude. That's fucking that is iconic. Fucking your cheating heart. Just fucking you go into it. You don't even gotta try. 
Oh my god. Okay, you just sparked a fucking thing memory in me, kind of. Uh, oh shit. You know what Hank Williams sounds like when he sings? When What's they tried that? to sing country when they tried to sing country on Cat Dog. Yeah, I mean that's probably because they're trying to emulate that sound, like like that's literally all I hear is the fucking greaser singing country. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what your that's what your impersonation of Hank Williams just did for me. But well, I'm glad I could help. Yeah. But uh, Harley, what were your top five? Um, my number five was "I'm So Lonely I Could Cry." My number four was "I Saw the Light." Number three was "Cold Cold Heart." Number two was Ramblin' Man, and number one was Hey Good Looking. Then my honorable mentions are You Win Again and Your Cheating Heart. See, I fucking hate Your Cheating Heart. I hate the way he sings that. But it just annoys the fucking shit out of me. But <sighs> my number five, I had no honorable mentions for this fucking album, but getting five was easy, eh, hard, hard enough, hard enough. I had to fucking count at the end and be like, all right, I got five already? Yeah, I'm good. All right. But my number five was long... about your album. Yeah, you both that honorable mention, so fuck off. But yeah. My number five... <laughs> yeah. No matter your intention, Chance, you still have them. So but I mean I separated uh... them because I separated them because it's like, listen, these ones are okay. The rest of this is trash. Uh, well, Jesus. <laughs> Number five for me, though, was Long Gone, Lonesome Blues, because that actually is a good track I kind of don't think I've heard before. I might have. I don't know. A lot of his songs sound the same. But number four was I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, because that's a fucking legendary song. I don't really like it that much, but it's legendary. Number three was Setting the Woods on Fire, because that, that's, a, that's a new one to me. I never heard that fucking song, and that was actually pretty good. Number two had to be, of course, and this is why I laugh, Fancy, the iconic Hey Good Looking, because who doesn't know that opening fucking line? Who doesn't know that shit? I've done that shit to my wife walking into the house for when I get home from work and shit. <laughs> so, but I always add in the bedroom at the end. You know, you have to. But, but uh, my number one was Jambalaya, because... That was, I never heard that fucking song before, but, and I fucking love Jambalaya, and that's a fucking amazing song. So, uh, now I want some Jambalaya after listening to that song, but I swear to God. That's the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, God damn it, I want Jambalaya, and I don't know any place around here that makes it. God fucking damn it. Why can't I live in the South? But, uh, so, I mean, yeah, Jambalaya on the Bayou was a damn good song. Kind of remind me of, uh, almost had, a uh, fuck, we did that. Yeah. Chuck Berry, uh, Havana Moon vibes, kind of. Kind of. Not the same guitar by any means, but definitely fine. Right. But, so, but, yeah, Hank Williams was, old Hanky boy was not horrible, I'll say. Not horrible. I could deal with it. Uh, but except for your cheating heart, that song's just horrible. I, just horrible. His voice makes me want to punch my computer screen. But, uh, oh, there you go, folks. We talked about Three albums rather quickly, I'll say. But we had to talk about these three. And yeah, it is what it is. But we you hear us talk about a lot of songs. Check out the Rolling Stone bracket parts every two weeks. We They release two parts behind the ones we're recording. But still, they're always there to watch on all the places we are. And we also have a 90s possibly bracket coming up on the asylum next month so that's gonna be interesting and icp's on i've been told by the inside source so you know you can't do 90s talking about icp you just can't you just can't and it's been hard picking the 90s songs because there's so many well that's why most people look for rankings but just saying but oh that's what i did but still <laughs> But you wouldn't have ICP if you did rankings. So I know exactly. you did some special editing. <laughs> but it's the world is fucked. But Harley, where can they find you? 
Um, the Asylum with Harley and Joker every Sunday night, 8 Eastern Time, and also the Mod Squad Network, where we have a horror show, a movie show, a gamer show, and we go live every Saturday night at 8 Eastern. Yes, there's a Mod Squad show for every day of the week. But, Chanty, where can they find you besides the deepest pits of despair? Um... <clears throat> On uh, TikTok and Instagram, it's uh, the Red Eye Roundtable. And on uh, X, it's uh, Red Eye Table. And then, you know, The Void. True. And the contest does continue, folks. Chancy needs to be forced to bring out another album of some kind, so try to find them if you dare. I check Harwood first. But you can, of course, find both your musers on Facebook as the Uncensored, Unapologetic, and Untamed Podcast Collective, you cubed. You can find us on X and the Gram as at Juggalo Bastard. You can find us on TikTok as at Juggalo Bastard Podcast. And you can find us on YouTube as Maniacal Music Musings. And, of course, you can find us streaming live on Parapost Network on Facebook, a great place for all podcasts and vodcasts. And you could find us as part of Blind ne- Knowledge Network. Because all knowledge is blind until you play with the children of the grave for a night. That's kind of worse than I thought it did. But be sure to come back in a week and a half and check out the next br- part of the Rolling Stone Top 500 Songs Bracket. I believe we're going to Part 9 now. And there ain't many parts left, actually. We got through these a lot faster than I thought we would since we speed up the how often we do them. So... I got, I got some other shit lined up afterwards. Don't worry, folks. But it's still a while till we got worry about that. It's all coming. Giggity. And your muses are out for the night. We thank Harley for coming on, of course. Because once I'm a co-host of anybody, I have to get them on the show solo at least once. So, you know, it, it was bound to happen eventually. And it only took about a month. So, yay. But come check us out next week. We have another great guest coming. No idea what albums yet, but we'll see. Until then... Users are